Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session about the SharePoint 2013 Search and Web Content Management, Better Together. Uh, this is the joint session. We will share it together with Alexi. Hello. We will start with a couple of words about ourselves, and then we'll go further. So my name is Anastasia Taurianin. I uh, work at Ed Business as the SharePoint consultant, basically with the concept design for the solutions based on the SharePoint 2010 and 2013. And before that, I was working at Predisus as the system analyst. Alexi? Hello, everyone. My name is Alexi Vesakko, and I'm working as an architect at uh, Microsoft Services Finland. I've been with uh, Microsoft since 2006, and my main responsibility are the productivity solutions. Uh, before joining Microsoft, I used to work for Tieto for eight years, and I can see a few familiar faces here from those days. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So, checking uh, the session objectives. Uh, this is a session which is full of stuff. So um, we are in a bit of a hurry, so uh, the questions you may have, uh, we hope that you will do those in Piazza during the, you know, the uh, relaxing session. Have a bottle of beer and come to us and we'll tell everything that you want to know more about search and web content management. But regarding the objectives, uh, we'll have a short introduction on web content management stuff. Uh, just like a recap, and then we go through a few features regarding search. Those are still independent features. And then finally, uh, we'll hit, as the session name already hints, we'll go through uh, whatever we have in common with web content management and search. These parts are more like uh, 200 level. So uh, if there are uh, dedicated nerds who want to uh, listen to lots of technical stuff, that is the latest part of this session. I'll, we'll have a look under the hood uh, in the last, say, 20 minutes or so. Fine. Uh, then moving on. Uh, first, uh, we'll go through some of the new features in web content management. And as I told you, without further introductions, I'm going to tell you about image renditions. So. Uh, this is an interesting uh, small feature within web content management, but may help you of you uh, that are doing content producing or whoever you uh, are helping the content producers within your organization. It's basically meant for uh, reducing the page weight so that once you upload images into your SharePoint site, let's say it's an internet site, you may have a dedicated set of different renditions ready-made for you. So, for example, if you have a huge image like 10 megabytes and you upload it to SharePoint, you can have uh, four different uh, renditions that are much lighter. For example, if you uh, want to show it in a mobile device and you know that the line is not that uh, thick, you pick a really, really thin uh, version of the image. And SharePoint does it automatically for you. Uh, that's slight nuance, but the next one, is uh, the video embedding, which has been enhanced since the previous version of SharePoint. Uh, previously, we had uh, Silverlight Control, the media web part, which was responsible for showing uh, what kind of uh, videos you ever wanted to show to the end users. Nowadays, we have HTML5 support and uh, with a fallback to Silverlight. And of course, as some of you may remember in uh, SharePoint 2010 installations, you had uh, slight problems in embedding videos, for example, from YouTube. But nowadays, uh, that one is supported already in the web part in the control itself, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, moving on a bit, uh, the rich text editor improvements. This is a uh, minor detail maybe, but again, for those uh, that are dealing with content producing, this may be really a huge feature as well. Uh, Anastasia will be showing a demo on the right-hand screen in which you can see uh, the, uh, the functionality in effect. Okay, so what I have here is the site created where I will be demonstrating you the improvements of the rich text editor. 
Uh, on the background, I have a Word document with some text prepared for that. I'll just copy it all, go back to my side, put the page into the edit mode, and paste the text directly into the content element. Notice that by default it already uh, pastes with the clean, um, pa pa paste the text clean. You have the option still to paste it with the uh, source formatting and also with the clean text. The good thing to see in here is that if we would, for example, before that, what, uh, in previous version of the SharePoint, when we were pasting the text, we would keep the source formatting. What we can do right now is we can check our HTML source code and we can see how many of the necessary elements the HTML has. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Hands okay. up, who has seen this before? Fantastic. Well, quite a few. <laughs> All right. So if we will paste it clean by default, we can see the HTML source. So we can see that it's clean. There is no any unnecessary elements or anything else. Also, we can demonstrate how it looks if we paste it as the text only. Oh, wrong button. All right, so the HTML source is also clean, which supports uh, Alexia's statement about the uh, rich text improvements into SharePoint 2013. So how do you like it? Who likes it? Hands up. The clean. I knew it. Everyone loves it. I love it too. Excellent. Thank you, Anastasia. Uh, then moving on, hmm. search engine optimizations. We do have uh, quite a few of those. And uh, well, my speaker screen is so small, I have to peek in there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, one to mention is the clean URLs. You know, the search engines love the clean URLs. So we got rid of the pages slash default ASPX. So, Nowadays, you can uh, just have it like on the upper right corner. There, the clean URL, those uh, disturbing ones are gone. Homepage redirects are gone. You can uh, serve the content directly from the root, as uh, stated in the example. That's a nice one. You have uh, country code top level domains, which is uh, something that you may take into use if you use variations. Like, for example, uh, I don't know how many of you know variations, but it's basically the automated uh, way to generate content in different languages. You create one in master, like, for example, English, and the system creates German, Japanese, and Spanish for you, and, of course, you have to translate those. But previously, those were served from the same uh, domain. Now, okay, nowadays, you can have uh, the, the uh, country top-level domain embedded or, well, uh, whatever, my English is rusty. Anyway, uh, XML sitemaps, uh, helping the search engines to actually uh, fetch the content from your website. We didn't have anything uh, during the 2010, and now in uh, 2013, uh, the system generates one automatically for you. Uh, the search engine optimization properties, as you can see on the uh, right upper corner, the uh, content producer has power to control whatever is uh, shown, for example, on the meta keywords and meta description. It's a feature which you put on or you put it off. Uh, you may or may not want to use it, but in 2010 installation, it was uh, something that always were customized. And finally, the Google Webmaster Tools integration, we've got it. So if you're using that one, you can uh, integrate with SharePoint fairly well. Then, oops, then moving on, uh, device-based rendering. So nowadays, everyone has different types of ga uh, gadgets, like for example, you have a laptop, or you may have an iPad. You may want to have a slightly different layout for those two different uh, devices. Uh, what you can have is a different master page in SharePoint for both. So that the uh, SharePoint realizes now it's an iPad coming in, I'm going to have to use this uh, specific uh, master page. So some of you may think about uh, what about the uh, responsive uh, web design then? Shouldn't we make one that fits all? Well, you can do it anyway. 
this is a feature which you can use, you don't have to use it. So uh, it's there in case you're dealing with such projects. Uh, automated translations. Uh, basically, we have integrated SharePoint into uh, the Bing translation engine so that you can translate whatever text you want to. The uh, place where we actually baked it into the product are, again, the variations. So if you, for example, have uh, your master content in English and you want to translate it to, for example, Finnish or Swedish, you just create the page in English and let the automated uh, translation process create your draft version, for example, in Swedish, which you can start working on, you being, for example, the manual uh, uh, translator. And you can also use it uh, as uh, your own customized features. You, be you can basically use it from the API, which gives you some uh, alternatives in, in, in there. Uh, Cross-site publishing. We'll be actu actually uh, showing this uh, a bit later in use, but the basic idea in cross-site publishing is that uh, you can create your content within one site collection in SharePoint. Let's say you have a list or pages or whatever, and you want to publish that information into a different site collection. That's possible nowadays. And uh, the th uh, way it actually works is that you basically use search to uh, uh, index the content, and then you pull it up and show it on the place wherever you want to. And remind me to show this in the example in the under the hood section. That's pretty neat in my opinion. Uh, manage navigation and clean URLs. This is something of definitely interest, especially uh, for these uh, internet sites. So what it means in practice is that uh, you can base your navigation, not only the content hierarchy within your SharePoint solution, you can base it on the managed navigation, and you can play with the navigation within the term store manager, which Anastasia will actually be showing you right now. So here I have a site for the web shop, web shop Contosa Electronics. And what we can see straight away is the URL. You can see that there is no more pages slash default ASPX. This is exactly what Alexei just said about the clean URLs. Also, please notice that on the top we have this kind of a navigation with the tabs and the drop downs. Uh, in order to utilize it or to see how it's working, we will go straight to the site settings and see how the navigation is configured. So we can see in here that we are utilizing the managed navigation, meaning that we are reading the terms from the metadata store to display it onto the navigation. This is the term set that we chose, and you can see in here that this is exactly our uh, tabs that we just seen on the front page. Uh, what we can do is we can actually open it parallel into the term store and see how it looks over here. So there's audios, cameras, and then the next level on the hierarchy are the items that are appearing on the uh, drop-down menu. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a couple of pages and see how it works in practice. So we would create uh, a page, and we would call it, for example, main page. Okay. Also notice the way how the URL is getting transformed utilizing those search engine optimization that Alexi was mentioning before. We are sub getting in the replace the white, sp white spaces with the dash marks uh, and we get the, all the words low capitalized uh, with the low, low <laughs> cases. Uncapitalized. Yes, uncapitalized with the low cases. All right. So let's create the page. And in here you can see the preview of the URL, how the URL is going to look. So we will create this page. All right, well, let's say we will add some content, save it, and very quickly publish it. Okay, so you can see it went straight onto the navigation. We can go to our uh, term store and 
can see in our term set into the site navigation. Mm, sorry, wrong. The site navigation. The term was also created along with the page. Uh, to illustrate another example, we will create another page. And what you can do is create, for example, sub page. So what managed navigation allows you to do is you can uh, <coughs> create pages at the same level, but then you can organize the hierarchy based on the term store. This is what we are trying to do right now. We created two pages, and you can see that currently they are dis all displayed into the main navigation. So they are our main tabs, the main page and then the sub page. What we are going to do right now is we are going to reorganize them and actually make the sub page appear as the drop down below the main page. So we'll go to our term store. Let's refresh it to see that the term was created. We will go to the site navigation. We will select our sub page and we will select move term. We will move so it move it straight under the main page. All right. And we go to our page, refresh the page. So here it is. The main page became our main primary tab, and the hierarchy below there becomes the drop-down menu. This is the easy way how you can organize the content with practically basing it only on your hierarchy in the metadata store. Thank you. Easy. Thank you. That was brilliant. Um, OK, then moving on. Uh, we do have uh, one more web content management feature, and that is the design manager. Uh, I'm not going to tell you much about Design Manager at this point because we have uh, what I think uh, kind of nice, cool demo for you. And this is the one that we are ending this session. So you have to hold your breath all the way. We'll start maybe 10 to, uh, uh, to half past 5. <coughs> well, anyway, moving on into the uh, search and the new features within that one. We don't have any more two engines. We only have one beautiful SharePoint search engine. And to borrow my uh, colleague uh, Vesa Juvonen uh, joke from this morning, we don't have fast anymore, but it still is fast. <laughs> what? No drum roll? No applaud? I'm slightly disappointed. Anyway, uh, going through the features in here, you probably heard about this continuous crawl. Uh, we're going to show this one also in the under the hood section, but uh, in brief, it's a third new way to crawl content, and it's rather efficient, especially when you have a SharePoint source. I'm going to show it to you later on. However, you also have uh, something called uh, the Search Federation or the Federated Search available. It's slightly different than what you had in 2010, and this is something that you can utilize, for example, in cloud scenarios if you have a hybrid environment in which you have your own SharePoint boxes sitting on your organization, and then you have a cloud uh, SharePoint also. Uh, you may want to have uh, one joint uh, uh, search experience to offer for the end users. And Federated Search is the one that you use to accomplish that one. You basically bind these two services together and show the results either in cloud or in the on-premise version. Uh, what else is new in here? Uh, entity extraction. What is that? Let's say you have uh, lots and lots of different documents uh, completely without metadata. You may want to uh, search into specific uh, terms or items within your documents and generate metadata out of those. It's possible nowadays. You can just uh, have your own custom dictionaries which you're looking for from the body of the document. And once ever the crawler and the indexer hits on that term, it actually generates a uh, managed metadata for you. Or not ma managed metadata, but managed property for you, which you can later on use, for example, uh, in search refining or whatever purpose you want to. Uh, in Finnish language, there are a few problems, have to be honest with you. Uh, seems that the custom entity extraction doesn't really work that well with Finnish but we have uh, used it for, for other purposes. English is much simpler because they don't bend the words from the end. 
in, in any case, if any one of you is uh, interested on the topic, please come to me in Piazza after the session and I can uh, reveal this thing a bit uh, in more detail to you. Uh, then, analysis of content and user interaction. That's something we have now in, in search, much better than we did in 2010. We are basically gathering all the time usage information whenever someone is using SharePoint. And uh, in the uh, Better Together section, in a few moments, we'll actually talk more about it and, and even show you a demo and give a few examples in which you can utilize that functionality. Cool. User interface improvements. Those are tremendous. And uh, my colleague Anastasia here will actually uh, show you a few examples from the Microsoft Production Cloud. All right, to begin with, let's have a look at the, how the layout looks. Notice that uh, in new SharePoint 2013, the search actually, uh, this, the result page or the search center, in this case the front page, is not customized that much, which actually allows you to achieve a very kind of a, a quick tweaking just by putting some logo into the corner and you don't need to do so much of the maybe style changes so that it will uh, give you just a faster um, how to put it, um, ad hoc way to look how the search center can look or what kind of um, customization you might still need for the layout. We will start by providing some of the search queries. And let's look for the Lexi. If I, I checked it, if there's I, no, if, there's if nothing I spell bad you happening. Harry was, I can see how his <laughs> body is all tense. All right, so this is our result page. If you uh, remember how we fast look, we still do have, of course, the refiners and we can uh, expand this part even more to get it into more detailed refiners and the fact that it maybe uh, changes. But what is interesting in here is that our on hover panel, this is, in my opinion, one of the um, most flashiest changes into the search 2013, SharePoint 2013, because you can get the actual preview of the document without clicking on it, and you can even more browse inside the document to see if you can find any kind of relevant information that you're looking for. Also, you can have if you um, the embedded. Um, uh, you can add also the result boxes or recommendations or promote some of the particular documents um, by providing the um, different, well, as I just said, the result boxes. For example, in here, Alexi, well, this is actually not the, the result box, so we'll see it in the other one, but uh, the one that's uh, um, interesting to see is that the uh, on hover panel information between the uh, different elements is also different. Like, for example, for the PowerPoint, and uh, for the Word document, it's different from the information that is displayed when we are on hover on the uh, person's information. We can get some of his uh, um, posts over here, preview, and you can see the view whole conversation and go further and call him or message him. If we search, for example, for something else, That is the, the exactly my point is to display the to show how the result block can look. So in here we have a people result block embedded into the uh, result page. So those four people are the ones that know everything about SharePoint at Microsoft, <laughs> obviously. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Anastasia, I will hand you this over and. Yes. The demo. So we are coming to the next session after uh, we learned everything new about the everything about the new features that the SharePoint 2013 provides that Alexi was presenting. We are going to learn how these actually new features in manage web content management and search work together. So let's go a little bit backwards here and see and try to remember how it was with the SharePoint 2010 and its predecessors. If you recall, before we used to, in order to display your content onto your web content management site, you had to use, uh, to pull the content straight directly from the uh, content database by utilizing the camel queries through the um, uh, content query web part. Okay. 
Well, that is all in the past because right now we are pulling it directly from to the search index. And uh, what you are gaining doing that, first of all, is of course that there is no more site collection boundaries. You are winning a lot in performance because you can have it more, much more scalable. Your SQL server is no more a bottleneck and you can actually scale out your servers in a way that your query role will be um, running on a different server supporting exactly uh, the uh, pulling the content if you have too much heavy load on that for your web content management site. And of course, the comprehensive way to um, work with your content query, which is practically the query builder, which allows you to um, provide uh, uh, necessary filters and already preview as the ad hoc information what kind of, a, how the search results might look. We will talk a bit more detailed about our, the search-driven functionalities, and of course, the first one is the content aggregation, which is, speaks for itself. It's just when you aggregate, aggregate the content pool from different places. We will open up every single point in a moment. We will just now list all the new uh, search-driven functionalities. The next one is the fasted navigation, which is practically, you can think of it as the set of the metadata terms that is used to filter the content that you pull out of the search index. That is very short and concise way to describe it. And the usage analytics, which has also uh, some changes and improvements. Let's open up every single point that we've been mentioning and start with the content aggregations. The star in here of the show is, of course, the content by search web part. Uh, what we have in here is the, uh, a picture of how the content by search web part looks when you actually doing the configuration. You can provide over here, you can see the filters and uh, all the necessary changes that you might need to do to the query. And that is the panel that I was talking about, which would give you the uh, ad hoc information, which is like the, your results preview. And of course, at the end result, you will get a perfectly looking web page. Uh, Oh, yes, and at this point, Alexi will be demonstrating this. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm just gonna go, ahead, I'm gonna go ahead into a really simple environment. I haven't customized this at all. It seems rather familiar to you, doesn't it? What I have created for, uh, for this demo already here are a couple of documents. I do have test presentation one. I have a subsite underneath. I have a tra uh, document called some demo. Uh, what I'll do, I'll just go ahead into the front page. I'll put this one in edit mode. Uh, place the focus here. I'm going to insert a new web part here. Uh, from the content rollup, I will find the content search, just like Anastasia said. And as you can notice, we all, uh, also have the previous content query. So if you are more into camel queries, you can still do it quite fine. This is the new one, though. Um, we'll uh, add it into the page and in a short while I should be able to see some stuff in here. I can go into the web part properties and do a few tweakings in here because I didn't quite like what I was uh, looking at. So uh, let's see. Uh, up here on the right hand corner I can see the query that is doing uh, towards the search index to pull the items that uh, are visible there. Now it's uh, saying recent, recently changed items. I can easily change that one into documents, for example, and I can say that all those documents from this current site collection are of interest. And as you can see on the right-hand side, I can see a preview of what's happening all the time, so I can have an idea what kind of content I'm pulling out. If I switch this to advanced mode, I can see some uh, more detailed ways uh, to tweak with the search query but we'll actually talk about it more later. Let's uh, just click on OK and uh, click OK in here. And then I'll do save of the page and I should be able to see test presentation one and some demo. Now this wasn't too uh, fancy, but you got the idea. It works pretty much the same way as the uh, previous content query. And this is also the preferred mechanism, in my opinion, nowadays to aggregate content from SharePoint to whatever, uh, uh, for example, news page letter you may have on the front page of your SharePoint installation. 
Okay, thank you. And uh, another thing, another part uh, that is using the content aggregation in the new SharePoint 2013 is the My Task. What it actually does is that it can aggregate your uh, your task from different places, for example, from the uh, project server, from the SharePoint, and from the Exchange. There is, though, the limitation. You have to have the uh, 2013 version for the Exchange, and the task has to be uh, created into the same form. But that's about it. If you are working in the same form and you have a 2013 Office integration you Exchange, uh, you have no problem with that you can aggregate all the tasks and see them, into my, see them in the My Site. Alexi, please show us I how will it show looks. You. I will show you. I've got uh, in Microsoft Production Cloud, uh, I do have My Tasks, so I'm actually seeing My Site. And as you can see, we have a few items already here, like, for example, a couple of items I've created into the My Site. So I have a task list on My Site in which I have created have a vacation starting in the last of June and listen to Tilted Kill today evening. What else? And the most important thing here is you can see I'm also pulling these tasks from a different site underneath the structure. So this is uh, like a, a project site or a team site, and the uh, task aggregation goes and pulls all the tasks uh, for me so that everything is in this nice packaged view on your my site. Um, Thank you, Alexi. Yes, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing about this one. This, as you know, doesn't have anything to do with web content management, no, but it's still something that you may want to uh, for example, uh, consider in your own organization or if you're a vendor, you may want to have a word with your customers because all the customers I've been talking about this one has been thrilled about the new feature. This is something they have been expecting for. I'm sorry. Yes, because you can utilize it exactly if you are using a lot of workspaces and then you have a lot of the tasks in the different workspaces, the aggregation will take all your tasks from different workspaces and for the end user it's of course much easier to manage when all the tasks are in the same place. You don't have to go through different workspaces to check your tasks. All right, thank you very much, Alexi. Let's continue forward and we have the faceted navigation which will be demoed just in a minute. But uh, to say about it, as I mentioned, it's practically the, just the set that you would use your managed metadata to filter the content from the search index. Uh, even though it's the new feature, of course, the best it's leveraged with the combination of the cross-site publishing and catalog. Then you can see that uh, it, it's utilized much better and we will have a demo about it shortly. And the last point that we have is the usage analytics. Uh, if you recall in 2010 SharePoint, we did have the web analytics service application that was responsible for gathering the usage analytics. So this is now is gone and the usage analytics uh, gathering is based now on search. So practically it consists of two different parts. The first one is the actual content crawling, which is the search analytics. And the second one is the actual usage analytics. And even though it's now based on search, the usage analytics doesn't mean that it only takes into account the queries that the user puts into the search box. It actually still gathers all the events. So all the interaction between the content or between the SharePoint, let's say, and the user are taken into account which gives you the opportunity to actually leverage your website by creating different recommendations and the popular items. The recommendations that you can create, like boxes that says the recommendations, will be based on the usage patterns. For example, it could be something like people who like this also like this, or people who looked at this also looked at that. Uh, and of course, the popularity of the items, which will you can lift up, for example, the top five or top 10 most famous, most popular news or services that you provide or products. We will see the demo of it right now, Alexi. Okay, good morning. Um, excellent, so let's see some demo about it. Uh, I do have an environment here, uh, which we are using this. Uh, Anastasia already showed you, but I'm just gonna go ahead into one single item that I already uh, kinda know. Uh, tablets and let's say Microsoft Surface, the new tablet. You like it? Who has it? Hands up. <laughs> Only two. Oh my gosh, all two people. Buy bought one, it. for Christ's sake. Anyway, uh, when I'm looking at this uh, item here, the Surface, uh, if I scroll down a bit, 
inside here you should be able to see something that may sound familiar for example from amazon.com people who like this product also like and that's what Anastasia was telling about uh, the content by search web part can pull out from the search index uh, recommended items for the user based on the uh, behavior analysis of the previous users so in my case people who are watching uh, Surface are interested in North Wind Traders comfort head uh, headphones for some weird reason, but that's how it works. All right, thank you very much. We will now look into de more details with some of the features that were mentioned, and we will go on into the our more technical part, more, much more interesting and exciting, of course, which is the look under the hood. Okay, you want to sit here? Excellent. So, uh, going into more, more technical, um, we do have a few things to show here. And the, f uh, the first one is actually a combination of different features within SharePoint. Uh, we have built this uh, web shop type of uh, service that you already saw, in which we are trying to advertise and perhaps sell a few products, sort of like catalog type of functionality. And we'll go and see how it actually works under the hood. You've seen it in action, but uh, let's, uh, let's rip it up and, and see what are the uh, building blocks of that one. The first one uh, will be cross-site publishing. Remember the one I told you I was planning to tell you a bit more? Well, Anastasia will actually show you in practice what it means and how the content within uh, the webshop is built on. Okay, to, be do. to begin with, we will uh, look again at this web shop front page. We will pay attention to our navigation, how it looks. Um, we do have already the cross-site publishing feature enabled on this site, but what we have to look at is the actual core of where the information is coming from. And this is the um, normal SharePoint list. It acts like a catalog, which is our source data, which we are going to be using to show it onto, on the uh, front page. This list can be any customized list you want. It doesn't have to be out of the box list. You can create it or customize it the way you would like to have it. And then what you would need to do is you would need to enable this list to be a catalog. You would do it through the list settings and the catalog settings. And this is the only thing you have to do. You have to enable this library as a catalog. And this library becomes your catalog, which means that you are going to have in there the data which will be reused. Um, let's go back. To our catalog. The data which will be reused on the uh, web page. So what we have in here is we have uh, items, which one items per row with the metadata that lets us group those items into different categories. This is exactly what we can see into the, on the home page. We have a different categories of items, which looks a little bit flashier and already more organized. And we will go into it after Alexi will tell you about the managed navigation. <laughs> yes, uh, let's. So, so the next feature we're using in this uh, web shop is uh, the managed navigation. Why are we using that one? Well, uh, we basically want to have the navigation built on the managed metadata as we showed you earlier in the beginning of this session. We, now have, we, we, uh, we want to have the clean URLs and also to be able to create those uh, category items in an easy way. And Anastasia, could you uh, peek also the uh, managed metadata service and uh, show us the terms. Right, we already had a look at them. This is the, our uh, terms on our top navigation and our meta, uh, managed metadata term store, where we can see in here the terms. Uh, also an interesting maybe point to mention in here that you can see that this is our consuming site, which is the Contoso Electronics, and our uh, catalog actually resides in, totally in a totally different location. We have in here our own uh, term store management where we have the same set of terms which are pinned, meaning reused, by this site, which is our consuming site from the authoring site. You can see have, there is this little uh, recycled icon kind of over here on the term, close to the term. So uh. we, would, uh, we are utilizing our 
term set, like on a site navigation, for example, to filter the content that we are taking from the product catalog. Yep. And yes, and uh, uh, so much for the navigation. What actually happens when you start wanting to uh, show the content on the page, that when, that's when uh, the content by search web part comes in. And you basically just uh, use the content by search web part to uh, figure out in which location the user is within the navigation and pull out the content from the uh, list which the content producers are using. Or, of course, you can uh, fill in the data into the list also from some backend system if you, if you have one. But in this case, we have inserted all the data manually there. And Anastasia, could you also show me and the audience uh, the content by search web part and how it was uh, configured? Right. So now, see, when we're trying to edit this page, it already asked do we want to edit the page template or only the page for the single URL. What it means is that we do have physically only one page, and we would be using the metadata uh, term sets to filter the content that we're pulling from that content catalog from this custom site. Uh, so the page is still the same, and this is really important to realize because we are actually reducing the amount of physical pages, even though we have so many different items onto the navigation, we do not need to have right now every single page responsible to show you different sets or different categories of items. So we would go now and see how the search, uh, content by search web part is configured here. We would go to the edit page, and we will go to edit the page template, meaning that source category page that we are actually utilizing. And in here we can see that we do have our web part that is named the targeted content search. Let's go and check the properties of the web part. Okay, so what we have in this web part is we can see the uh, search criteria. It was already pre-configured, so let's see what kind of configuration we have in this web part. We will go to the advanced mode. And what we can see is that uh, the filter that is applied, we are pulling the uh, content type um, of a type list or the document. So once this uh, criteria is that satisfied, it goes further and takes the SP site URL, so the URL of our web, and pulls the data from the product catalog list with the list ID where is it provided, and then it matches our managed property. So basically, once we created our I will go out of here, back to our products contoso. Once we created our catalog where the items are provided over here and we provided different metadata, we crawled, we created the crawled property. Then after that, we would create our managed properties. And then we can use those managed properties in various ways. First of all, we can use them to filter our content by using the content by search web part. And now I'm a little bit running forward, but we uh, can actually utilize them also for our faceted navigation, which was that new feature that we are going to talk about in a moment. So we go back to the search, content by search web part, go to our query, uh, go to the advanced mode, and we can see the, the already ad hoc preview of the results, what kind of uh, uh, products we can pull with this query. You can, of course, provide m many more filters and check and do the sortings and refiners and other things. Uh, in this case, we just simply pull all the ones that are matching this property. All right? Also, in this pro web part property, we can see that we can limit the number of the items displayed, just like in any other web part before, where you could limit the display of the items. And we're also using the custom templates. We're using the uh, custom display template for the control, which is the Contoso Electronics list with paging, which means that we are having, we, we have uh, the end result displayed as a list, which is our items in the list with paging. Here it goes, our paging element on the top. And the, the item display is also using its own um, display template, which are also very not complicated to do and gives you um, a very straightforward way how to customize your site by pulling the content and making it very flashy and very beautiful looking from something like this kind of list, which is not really too user-friendly. It doesn't matter how many filters you would apply or views you would create, it still obviously will never beat the way how it's represented by using the content by search web part. And the rest of the properties is the same that they always are that you can configure onto the 
uh, web path. I will leave it here open, this page, because we're uh, very shortly jumping into the faceted navigation, Yes, I, I believe. Thank you. Uh, that is the next one. Uh, search refiners. What we have accomplished so far is the navigation. We have pulled out the content. We do have uh, lots of screens in there. But you may have already noticed on the, on the uh, left-hand side on the page, you can still narrow down uh, the contents by several different uh, variables. Like, for example, in uh, the example here, you can see that you can narrow down by brand and uh, the color of whatever uh, thing uh, you're looking at. And Anastasia, could you show us uh, an example of uh, different kinds of refiners or faceted yes. navigation, sure. as it is called? Um, so what we can look in, in on this side, that this is another web part that will be connected to our search content web part, and it's utilizing also the uh, managed navigation um, terms the terms from the term store and from the term store as you can see that during our whole presentation we are all the time talking about practically the same notions it's all the time everything is about managed metadata search index pulling the content filtering the content based on the uh, managed metadata so if we go to our um, original place where the catalog is located and have a look at the um, our hierarchy of the um, terms. We can go, for example, to the laptops. Um, where were we here? Did we go to laptops here? I think, yes, it was computers, laptops. So we can go here to the laptops and see that um, in our laptops um, term, we do use the fasted navigation. Before I go further to the refiners, I would like to notice that the inheritance in this term has been broken. It says that this term has custom refiners. Why? Because we, even though we are using uh, this term set or this term hierarchy, um, which, we can, which can be reused like furthermore, um, um, <clears throat> uh, just a second, I lost the thought. Yes. So. Um, the inheritance is broken, meaning that when we are having, for example, a term set with the different subterms or the child terms underneath, which are using a different uh, parameters or the different filters to get a different data, the inheritance can be broken because, for example, in practice, the laptops do have the screens, the screen size, but for the printer doesn't have a screen size, yet it still belongs to the computer term set, meaning that if you would not break the inheritance, uh, the same type of the refiners would be available for every single child term in the term set. Now when we break the inheritance, it allows us to have a unique refiners for every child term within the term set. All right. Yeah. Show it in action. Okay. Show it in action. And the refiners, what we can see are the refiners that we were talking again. You have a crawled property after we, from which you create your managed property, and then you can use those properties as the refiners. So there is the price uh, on sale, brand, color, screen size. Let's go and see how it re, uh, transform, transfers into the practice. There is a brand, the price, the color. There is a little bit of a JavaScript to render it, obviously, so that it looks nice the color and then if it's on sale or not. Let's have a look uh, at the child term, how the child term looks in the same category. Like for example, in the computers, again, we just watched the laptops with the one particular set of the refiners. If we select from the same category, uh, let's say desktops, we, we have a completely different set of refiners. We have a memory, we have a hard drive, which exactly uh, illustrates the fact that if we would not break the inheritance, every single child term under the computers would have the same refiners, but because we did, we can use a different uh, refiners, thus create a different faceted navigation for every term below. Thank you. Yes. Everyone still awake? This is now the 300 part, as you can see. <laughs> I can see some sleepy eyes in there. But do not sleep yet. Uh, let's go forward and uh, quickly talk about continuous crawl. I promised you in the uh, first half of this presentation to talk a bit more on, on that one. Why is it so important? Well, in previous version, you did have full crawl in your search, which basically means that it goes into your whatever location, pulls out all the content, indexes it, 
and everything is fine. You have incremental crawl, which goes there and tries to find all the uh, stuff that has been changed and just, you know, uh, fixes the index with that information. Continuous crawl is a third mode now. It's available only for uh, SharePoint sources. And it's based on the fact that SharePoint can tell really easily that these are the pieces of information that has changed since the previous continuous crawl has happened. So what is the idea of continuous crawling? Well, the idea is, let's put it this way. If you have a full crawl and you initiate a full crawl, let's say you want to do it once per every hour. Let's say one beautiful day uh, your content index is too huge and the crawl will take like two hours. It will actually start the uh, full crawl right after. Continuous crawl does it a bit differently. It actually does it in a way that you can have several different threads doing the crawling at the same time. So if you have uh, done some tweakings with, for example, the uh, user rights, or you have completely restructured or put in a whole bunch of new data into your SharePoint, you can have a long running uh, continuous crawl going on and trying to find the information. When the uh, interval or the threshold had been uh, set, let's say you want to do a continuous crawl every five minutes, after five minutes a new thread will start and it will actually go and try to find the uh, changed information that has, uh, okay, that has changed uh, during the five last minutes. Why is it so important? Well, let's say you have based your uh, uh, internet site on SharePoint 2013 and you constantly generate news articles. You may not want to have your news articles to be appearing after two hours when the first full crawl has been done or the first uh, incremental crawl has been done. Uh, once you uh, have a continuous crawl and the second thread starts to uh, find the information, the news article will actually pop up uh, by latest within five minutes into the aggregation which you have probably uh, created using a content by search web part, for example. I think you... Very quickly, we can see how the configuration looks. You would go to your search central administration to the search service application, and for example, we will go to the SharePoint local uh, site's um, content source, and we can see that this is the place where you can actually enable your continuous crawl. The way to set up the different um, um, time period when the continuous crawl is going to be triggered is through the PowerShell. Or we may have to confess one thing. You can do it from the user interface if you first enable the incremental crawl and set the schedule for incremental crawl and then change it to continuous crawl. It will actually use the same value. And I, at beta stage, I made a bet with Anastasia and I owe her now one bottle of champagne for that. Yes, the bet was that it would be changing in the, from the beta release to the final version that it will be changed, but we can find it still in the final version from the beta release. It does work. You would just put your schedule into the incremental crawl over here, you create the schedule, then you hit enable continuous crawl, and this is the way how your schedule will get applied to the continuous crawl. Maybe it's just a hidden special feature. Yeah, Could yeah, be. yeah. You'll get your champagne. Yeah. <laughs> Moom coming up. And finally, uh, we saved this one for the last. This has nothing to do with search, but it's something fancy. We are talking about the design manager. Well, uh, design manager is something to do with web content management, and it's, uh, the demo we are showing is uh, trying to um, uh, get a picture of you how easy it is to tweak with the layouts nowadays in uh, 2013. And uh, actually, without further introductions into the topic, Anastasia, would, be, uh, would you be kind enough to go and try to find us a decent layout which yes, we can use we for the demo? Yes, we will go through this uh, pretty quickly because it's all straightforward and it just shows you how easy you can change the um, user interface. Like for example, we can take, this is the site, the public, website, the public site where you can just go with this free web templates.com and choose already made for you, kindly uploaded by other kind people. Uh, different layouts. What we are looking for is for the HTML5 layout. For example, we can take the layout that calls water or anything else that is as user-friendly as big, huge blue box of text. And uh, we would check it, okay, it looks fine, and you just, what you only need to do is you need to download it, the file. It takes a while. Yes, then we save it. 
to the desktop. Okay, so we downloaded our package from this. It's saved onto the desktop. It's called water. We will extract it. And here it is, extracted files. What we're going to do right now is we're going to do, take this package with all the files that someone else created for us and copy it to the server where we're going to actually change this master page and change the layout. We will copy the whole folder. This one. Oh, no, this is not that one. Water, this one. We will go to our server and we will paste it straight here to the over here so now what we have is we have a created out of the box site which looks very fairly simple like this just a normal out of the box site no much changes with some text what we're doing here right now is we can go to the design manager from here and we would go to upload the design files and uh, we will open our uh, file browser which is opening it into the master page gallery thank you and uh, in here we have our uh, okay well uh, we will go to our desktop and what we will do is we will take from our desktop and we copy just this folder with those layouts that we copied that was extracted all so the stuff <laughs> HTML, yes. CSS, images, all the stuff. So what we did, we just downloaded the package, we extracted it, and we placed it into the master page gallery. The whole folder was everything. We, at this point, we didn't do anything web designer-like. It's just a basic file work. Download and copy paste. All right, so now it's here. What we're going to do now is we will go to, where was it? To the... There, convert. Yes, to the edit file. master page, to the edit master page option, convert HTML file to SharePoint master page. What we're going to do is we're going to choose the file which we're going to convert into the master page. We will select our water folder and we will choose our index file and just hit OK. Waiting. And it's going to create us a new master page. By clicking the conversion successful status, we can preview how it looks. So this is what we did. We practically just uploaded the new master page with all the elements. You can notice that over here on the bottom we have a div element. Alexa, like, so do you want to talk about it? Yeah, shortly. Uh, what SharePoint does is it actually grabs all the HTML, um, goes through it, and adds a few elements. And SharePoint is kind enough to add this yellow element. This is where you should have your content. Move it wherever you like. So uh, would you like to move it to the proper place? Uh, I think at this point, we will just simply show how you could apply the master page. OK. Yeah. Right? So what you're going to do with it in practice is that you will take your HTML index and you can just practically rearrange the different elements. And you can put uh, that this div content will go, for example, over here. And your content is going to be applied on that place where the div is. But what we're going to show is that once you are done editing all the elements, in your master page, the only thing that you need to do is to go and, and apply that master page to your site. So we will go to the site settings, master page, and we just choose. <laughs> no, it's gone. And I do know what the problem is. It is version, so uh, we would have to approve that one. I can do it quickly for you, if you allow me. I'll just go ahead and do it from here. I will go into uh, the site settings. I will go into the master page gallery and into the library settings. I will go ahead and do some tweakings in here in the versioning, because now we have the versioning. Uh, there, uh, I think that should do the trick, and then we can quickly go back in here and <laughs> see that maybe we already have the index here. Conversion is successful, and I suppose if we go here, we should be able to see the file now. And if it's not, well, then we just have to get our coat. <laughs> <laughs> 
demo effect. It was so close. It was so close. Um, please, uh, can we have all the questions? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. You should. You should publish the HTML file. Well, actually, uh, it it works in a way that you should be able to see it. But uh, when you have the versioning on there for the first time, you do it. But we can we can check it. Uh, go into the master page gallery. No, here. We are sort of running late. If it doesn't work, then we will just we will just give up on this one. Yeah, as you can see. Uh, Disabled version. I know, I know, I've done the same thing. It is the versioning. So I'm sorry you couldn't see uh, the master page in action, and this was the nicest demo of ever. I wanted to show it to you. Uh, well, that's life. Anastasia, will you forgive me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, like never. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, any one of you who's really interested of this, I promise to take the laptop and we'll show you the demo while we have beer in the evening. Anyway, uh, what we'd like to say at this point is please do give feedback for us. Uh, the boxer is there. Uh, maybe you can see I've already vote. given some feedback. Uh, but please go into techdays.fi and give feedback from there or use your Windows phone application and do it. Plus, but uh, just please do it anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please come to Piazza, we will definitely show you the demo and it does work, we, we rehearsed so it like nice. minimum five times. Uh, don't go to Piazza, stay here, now the cool stuff starts. And now you can open up Arre, the what? <laughs> you can stay too. <laughs> Kiitoksia, Kurufoorumi jatkuu täällä Kiitos. 20 Kiitos. vailla, tervetuloa. Miettikää hyvät kysymykset valmiiksi, Kiitoksia.